The first tip we're looking at is turning the shape tool into a grid builder. So by drawing a shape, you can actually increase the amount of subdivisions available by using the arrow keys. This creates an array of shapes, uh, which are actually independent, so you can move individual pieces around. So if you select them, you can move them in as a whole or individually. This doesn't just apply to squares, you can use it on circles as well as frames. It's a great way to build frames, logo walls and shape arrangements. The next tip we're looking at is dynamic spelling. So dynamic spelling allows you to check things on the fly. Uh, it allows you to look at big paragraphs of text without having to actually read through it to see errors. Uh, by going to edit spelling and then to dynamic spelling, uh, it automatically adds the little red lines underneath errors within your text. Uh, this is a great way to actually proofread a presentation or a document you're working on without actually having to go through everything meticulously. So you are able to edit things by right clicking and changing the spelling. If a word is not listed, you are able to go to spelling and click check spelling. And from here, you can select the word that's coming up with an error and add it to the user dictionary. You are also able to change the spelling within the same panel. Uh, this can greatly improve your workflow. When I work within InDesign, one of the main things I like to do is build shortcuts for things that I find laborious. Um, I find that using the align panel, it can be quite time consuming as you're selecting, clicking, pretty much the same thing consistently. Um, to counteract this process, I create specific keyboard shortcuts that allow me to create the same actions, uh, but with ease. Uh, so by going to keyboard shortcuts and looking for object editing, can find the horizontal, vertical, and different alignments that you need to change. By inserting keyboard shortcuts, you can create your own ways of working within InDesign. And by working within InDesign in a way that feels comfortable for you, you can actually increase your speed and your workflow. Where InDesign operates on a vector-based shape tool, uh, you can actually copy and paste over vector drawings from Illustrator. Uh, this can be great for making sure you have high quality logos that need to be adjusted. So for instance, if you've got to change colors or maybe even in some cases like icons, so you can change paths and make sure they're up to the idea you need it for. As you can see, they work almost seamlessly in terms of keeping fidelity from the vector drawings from Illustrator. Within InDesign, you can actually use Data Merge as a way of creating the same design, but for different text parameters. So what you're really doing is inputting a CSV document, which is a text file that has values separated by comma. You can then select on different fields and actually insert specific parts. So for instance, on this business card, you can insert the name, the title, the phone number, and the email address. And then once you are able to preview it, you can flip through and see the different variations of the same uh, business card. Where InDesign operates on the same software or similar building as Illustrator, you are able to create different effects based on a single object um, and you can interact with different parts of the object. So for instance, if you click on the FX button, you can see the top part, which shows the drop down menu, uh, selecting different parts of the single shape. So you can affect the fill, the stroke, or the entire object. This allows you to add different effects uh, that affect just parts of the shape rather than the entire thing. So for instance, with this demonstration, I'm just making a gradient affect the stroke on one side, and then the stroke to have the, the same gradient, but on the flip, Using the eyedropper tool, you can actually copy and paste effects over quite seamlessly. Um, at least that way it speeds up your workflow and allows you to just copy and keep consistency. Um, if you click on the effects panel, you can see the entire effects that are used on each shape. As well as um, if your effects panel isn't available, you can go to window and 
click on effects. Within the effects panel, you can actually turn down certain effects or opacities so that you can see certain things more sharper. Within InDesign, you can change text into outlines. So by going to type and clicking on create outlines, you turn text layers into individual shapes. From here, you can ungroup them and turn each letter into its own shape, uh, which can be interacted with to change color or effects. Where these are now vector frames, you can also place images within them. So if you group a selection of letters together, and then pasting an image into that, it will take the form of the letters in a sort of mask way. Uh, you can then double click on the picture and move it around to match the composition you needed it for. Within InDesign, you can create different styles for your text. Essentially, it's like creating a default to copy from the idea is you design your typeface um, in the right way for your document, uh, paying attention to kerning, leading, and tracking. You can then create a new paragraph style, which allows you to confirm or adjust the settings. Uh, you can name this style so you can come back to it, like for instance, body copy. Um, you can then insert all the details, including things about um, indents and hyphenation. And once you've designed you've decided the settings, you can save it and begin to apply it. The benefit of using styles is it can be applied to different text boxes and will maintain the, the style consistently. It's a great way to speed up your workflow, especially when working with large amounts of text, um, as if you make one change to the style on one text box, it goes through and makes the same changes consistently through the whole document. I find this great when working on things like manuscripts or presentations. Uh, within InDesign, there's quite a few different views that you can use. So if you right click, uh, you can see the different views. So you normally start off with a typical view, which is like a, a pseudo high res view. Um, you then have high quality view, which is uh, the most sharpest. And then you have fast view. Uh, fast display is great for layouts or just working with just frames so that you can create an arrangement without actually caring about what's going in it. Um, as you can see, when you click on an, a frame box, you can resize it and it shows you where the image will actually sit using the X. This isn't the only view. So we've also got different assists to help us when designing. Uh, you can add different grids or guides to help you work. So if you go into grids and guides, uh, you can select the regular guides, which are like columns um, and rows. You can also use rulers. And by, by pressing control and the colon button, you can turn them on and off. There is also a regular grid, which is a square based grid that fits the entire canvas. By pressing W, you can go into preview mode. And by pressing Shift W, you can go into presentation mode. On the back of the last tip, there is also a baseline grid, which is a very useful grid to use when setting type. Uh, by going to preferences, you can change the baseline, which is how text interacts with the page. So let's just choose a typeface here. So the idea is when you use a baseline grid, um, you'd want either the first line or all to align to the uh, baseline grid. Trying to do this by freehand can be quite time consuming. Whereas what you can do is you can set it to follow the specific size in the paragraph settings. Here you can also choose whether it follows only the first line or all the lines. Hopefully you found some of these tips useful. Uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks.